Sweet, sweet, ready to eat. Uh, we're in. Oh, of course that happened. Hello? Uh, let me fix this. Hey, it wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be a day of uh, D&D without some shenanigans. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Hey, hi, hello. Uh, t uh, officially to YouTube, hello for the first time live. Um, and for anybody who's been following this campaign, hello again. Uh, this is All Hail the Queen. It's a D&D. &D. 5e plus home, homebrew uh doing it live thingamajigger i'm that magic juice i am the dm slash shepherd of this lovely group of people that i call my cool cats most of the time uh we're gonna go around the table introduce ourselves our characters do a brief recap of just what happened last time uh because eventually we ha we will have things put back together and then we'll get moving um and on that point, I will just apologize right now. Our playlist of everything to this point is kind of split between multiple places vis-a-vis -vis my transition from uh, Twitch to YouTube for live streaming. So we will eventually get that all together in one place. Uh, so I apologize for anybody who's just stumbling upon this as your first episode. But for us, this is session 21 of All Hail the Queen. With that, we're going to start with Aster going around the table. All right. Hey everybody. Hi YouTube. Good to meet you for the first live stream that I've ever been on here. Um I use she they pronouns. Um and tonight I am playing Aster. She is a a shifter circle wildfire druid, um, who uses she her pronouns. Um she is a um a person that is going to eventually be one of the leaders of her druid circle and is kind of on this journey to learn those leadership skills and hopefully return um and you know pass whatever tests necessary um to be able to do that for her clan later on um but first we're gonna get through the storyline and hopefully stop the rise of tiamat um but uh that's enough out of me over to bright Hello everyone, my name is Bright, and you can find me on all forms of social media at Bright Dystopia. Tonight I will be continuing my role as Spunk, uh, the grung capable of magical feats. Uh, it has been a long running joke that I never say what class he is, uh, but for the first time here on YouTube, I will tell you that Spunk is a... Yeah. Yeah, I, I was waiting for that. Moving on Beautiful. Over to Hyacinth. Before you start, Hyacinth, I'm sorry. Uh, just because of the way it's cut off on the overlay, nobody could see the whole thing. But it was very much the what you heard uh, style of Spunk tells the group his class. Okay, oh now Hyacinth. It's just the gang his class. Oh, the gang. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hyacinth. I will be playing Icarus. Our, my pronouns are he, they. Icarus is he, him. And he is an elven paladin warlock. And he is one of our two darling twins. So, um, yeah, he's kind of figuring out his role and his relationships and a whole bunch of things about himself. So... Corndog. Hello, everyone. It's me, Corndog McGraw. I will be playing Juno, the Twilight Domain Cleric. Um, at, before Magic told us about stream, I was about to say Trickery Domain Cleric, and then I remembered, no, she just likes pranks. Uh, but she's Twilight <laughs> Domain, Cleric of the Moonweaver. Uh, twin to Icarus. Uh, we are Pallid Elves, according to Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm just here for a good time, and Juno's just doing her best. Uh, so we'll see how, we'll see how today goes. Uh, she's ideally gonna help stop Tiamat, uh, but who knows? I mean, the last dragon we fought was super easy, uh, but then he was abducted, and, uh, his corpse is probably going to be reincarnated, uh, so that's not ideal, but we'll see how our journey goes. I'm excited to see what happens with these giants. Over to you, Chrissy. Hello, I'm Chrissy Cripps. 
I use uh, she, they pronouns. I'm going to be playing uh, Ulta Cragmaw. She is a uh, Swarmkeeper Ranger. She is a Kobold. Did I say that already? Oh, all right. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, she uses she, her pronouns. Um, you know, I, I don't really know what to say about Ulta right now. She's experiencing some sort of existential crisis. Uh, she's missing a shadow. She misses her family. She's confused by the group of people she's traveling with. And she is especially confused why the tiny grown keeps pulling out things from various holes in their body. How are you, Magic? All right. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, okay, so what happened specifically last time? A, a little bit of broader context, just a little bit. Uh, we're at... Zonthal's Tower, which we know is a, oh, let me get this going, which we know is a an infamous tower named after a prolific wizard who may or may not still be alive. We know is from uh, longer in the past than most humans would live, but uh, we don't know much about him beyond that, other than the fact that this is a tower that he built and has been dedicated for a long time to the edification and teaching of wizards and various practices. Um, so we've been going through this maze that supposedly leads to the tower. Uh, and it's been a, a strange sort of chaotic, magically conjured and created uh, mess of things, including the puzzle to get through it, which we have, we know in character and over the table that we've made significant progress through. Um, and at this point, we are now in a strange area in this hedge maze where uh, two Cyclopses, when we entered this room, you can see at least one on the screen right now, kind of played a game against each other with their hands. Uh, one of them, by the way they reacted, seems to have lost the game, um, picked up one boulder uh, and, or sorry, two big boulders, carried them over to us um, and just hurled one of them across the room is basically looking at uh the party for a reaction that's the long and short of what we've experienced in this room so far so the floor is yours guys what would you like to do or if there's anything you want clarified since it's been a while you're more than welcome to to ask no i think i got it um this guy was coming after me right he was walking towards me last we left off uh, yes, and it was it was notable that both of them, so far as you can tell, appear to be unarmed. And this one coming toward you didn't seem really like a hostile action, but it is rather imposing since this thing is three sizes larger than you. Mm -hmm. Didn't all of time freeze or something? It was frozen when you first got here, and everything seemed to come to life when Spunk crossed the threshold into the, into the room. Oh, yeah. He threw a rock, right? He threw yeah. Something. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I We're... think he wants us to uh, also attempt to throw something. I think this was like a dick was... measuring contest, but yeah. uh, with rock yeah. throwing. Let's be. So does anyone having uh, does anyone have any yeet skills? Because um, I have no stats yes. in yeet. Indirectly, yes. For anybody watching, okay. the the other boulder landed down here. Um, he threw it sixty five feet. Okay. Okay. I, I will say I am stronger than I used to be, but I do not have anything that throws boulders far. I can uh, guide someone who's good at throwing things. <laughs> I'm going to point at this boulder right here. You, this one. And I'll point um, at me. Is going to... Uh, look at you directly, Spunk, instead of just like broadly scanning the group and just kind of like cross his arms and with the mm, just squat onto the ground and stare right at the boulder. Uh, Can anyone I'm speak gonna, giant? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm not even, I'm just gonna walk up to his toes and draw a line in what I assume is sand <laughs> and just run my finger across a straight line just you know like across here yeah 
Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go over the boulder. How big is it? Uh, it's it's actually not much larger than you, Spunk. Uh, okay. It's per like almost perfectly spherical, but in overall size, it's about the size of you. Can I roll it up to the line? Um, what is your strength? Not a lot. <laughs> I have a strength of ocho. <laughs> no, you try to push it, it doesn't budge. Okay, okay, okay. So this is gonna be a problem. Icarus, Icarus, help him. <laughs> it's like, help it, I, I, help it. Do you need help with your boulder? I don't think so. I just, it's gonna be a little more complicated than I thought. Give me one second, he'll run around to the other side of the boulder that faces you guys. Don't make any facial reactions to what I'm doing. Uh, and he'll reach into his stomach and pull out a little piece of white chalk and like start drawing uh, on the edge of it. He'll make like a little circle with like a feather on the inside, a couple of runes around the edge. Uh, and then he'll go <laughs> and spit right onto it as the runes glow for a second. He'll cast Levitate on the rock. Okay. Uh, and he's just going to pick it up enough to where it, he puts his hand underneath it and he's going to... Uh, make it look like he's lifting the thing. Okay, Hyacinth, I'm going to need you to push this as hard as you can. Okay? Okay. As, as you're lifting it up, you guys will see the Cyclops that's near you kind of like squint his one big eye and just tilt his head and sort of lean over until his head's on the ground, basically. Just deadpan staring at spunk uh with this sort of as far as you can tell from a single eye a sort of surprised like wide eye and then he just looks at the other one at the end of the room and it, the other one just <laughs> so this is pretty much bowling now as we're gonna push oh shove it up. sure on the count of three Anybody else want to help us push this thing? I mean, sure. Do you speak giant? Do I? No, I don't speak giant. I'm not sure how many of us <laughs> are allowed to do it, but sure, I can help. Would you allow that? Magic? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Can we all push it together? Sure. Uh, push it. <laughs> push right, everybody, it really line up. Put your hands on the shoulders of the person behind you and give it the shot. Uh, I'm going, I'm going to... to go directly behind Spunk and cast Guidance as I do nice. this. <laughs> just in case there's like a deception check or anything like that. Okay. We're just going to line up like a rail gun and push this ball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ready. Sound good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. With, can you like fake like an arc, or is that just? Don't say. Don't say unless he's. We don't know if he speaks common or not. Just assume that he does. Okay, so you're all collectively pushing this thing along, huh? Yeah, we're all like lined up, Oops. hands on shoulders, and we're all just gonna make like a uh, motion as like you know, like a bobsled team with hyacinth at the front. You okay. put your anchor at the front, right? I don't remember yeah. how that works. <laughs> oh, your arms look like they're least likely to break, so... <laughs> at least not in, like, tug of war. Well, we're not pulling, we're pushing. Yeah, we're not pulling, so you put we're your pushing. anchor in the so, front. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's totally the inverse. the opposite. As the coach, I can confirm this is exactly, there you exactly go. how it works. <laughs> this makes physical sense. Okay. So you start to push this along and passing the giant that's been sitting there, you'll see it um, as, as far as you can from your peripheral, unless you were to we're intentionally gonna, like, look just like... Uh, sorry, maybe I misled you. We're not going to shove this thing all the way and just push it like a bobsled. 
Oh. I'm saying we're lining up like a Jamaican Yeah, we're going to we're going to give it, it. A one. Gonna, okay. Gonna, yeah, and yeah, one yeah, hard one push. push. Yeah. One okay. one lean back followed by a swift push. And then I'm going to make levitate bring it up as it kind of sails slowly and then I'm going <laughs> to bring it down and I'm just I'm just going to I want it to land maybe 5 to 10 feet like a, a soft push back into the sand as it grinds Got on the it. floor. Got it. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood you. Uh, one quick second. <laughs> it's just we're like pushing this thing down. Like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, just carrying it. I'm, I'm sure they would understand. Oh, he threw it. Yeah. Look at me run with this rock. <laughs> <laughs> we're the same as you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so you give you give one big heave. Everybody, make a strength check, please. Is it strength or is this deception? This is strength. Let's go. A levitating rock. Oh, no, not bad. Pretty not good. bad, team. Hold on, you gave me guidance. So. Yeah, plus a D4. Yeah, you get a D4 with mine. How do I make it so that it does? Oh, I did a strength save, but it's the same thing. I do not have okay. proficiency in strength save. Okay, that's fine. I just don't know how to use the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Been four years, three room? years of doing this. How do you use DPDB on Beyond? <gasps> 18. Whoa. Plus. Beautiful. Two is a 30. Hey. Oh, actually, that's technically a natural 20. <laughs> oh, Jesus, because you have a you minus two. Your minus. <laughs> <laughs> I have a strength of zero because I have a, a Lux. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not okay. bad, everybody. Pretty so good. So you all plant your feet and give this thing one big heave, and I don't know why it went sideways. Oh, that's that's why. Um, and after a few seconds, it it goes about fifteen feet, and you can see it kind of just like slowly rolling from where you guys had had pushed off. And it's doing exactly what you intended, Spunk. It's doing the slow, basically ten, fifteen feet every second or so, which is. Not throwing it, but well, <laughs> it's it's going. I'm gonna turn to the giant to sell it to go. Oh <laughs> awesome. I think that sold it, yeah. Yep. Okay, it's it's gonna it's gonna keep sailing a little bit, and the this cyclops is gonna stand up at the same time the one in the back of the room does. Um and in in the same amount of time like this one sort of takes a few steps around this way these are little huts by the way um that that he's walking around here and just sort of like sets himself up for watching it come toward this spot and this one is gonna get up and like take a couple hurried first steps to shuffle along and catch up to the boulder and get in line with it and you can see him just just walking sideways and just watching it and matching its pace with every individual footstep. I love this. Like a race. <laughs> I love run. this so much. Uh, the Cyclops that's following the boulder is is gonna look at the one on the end again, and the one on the end kind of has this stupid like what grin on his face. <laughs> Uh, and then the one watching the boulder still has this like completely bewildered wide-eyed look and it like you can tell this one's kind of amused too and looks back at you guys with this sort of like like side eye looking around sort of look um, and just keeps walking you guys doing anything? I'm gonna flex <laughs> <laughs> like yeah flex one time we did that <laughs> Um, Spunk, please ping the spot that you wanted to have this thing land again. Okay. Okay, yeah. A few more steps. Uh, and we get to this point, and the Cyclops actually just, like, thunk right in, right into this hut. Uh, he, he, like, bumps into it and realizes he, you know, was, was walking right into it. And then, uh, instead of, uh, continuing forward or, like, running around it or anything, just kind of, like, puts his hands on the side of it and around to watch the rest of the trajectory of the boulder along with the other one where it's angling down now and just kind of lands with a gentle plunk on the ground here. I think that's the perfect distance. It's quite believable. 
Uh, they're both going to simultaneously look at you guys and with one arm toward you, just kind of go. Uh, I'm going to give some low high fives all around. Slowly. All around, a whole group. <laughs> yeah. Do you spit in my hand? <laughs> Why are we in slow motion? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up at normal. I mean <laughs> not hyacinth. hyacinth. Definitely Icarus this whole time. Icarus not hyacinth. <laughs> One day you'll get it. One day. <laughs> One day you'll remember everyone's character names. He screams up in the sky and tells Hyacinth to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll figure out how to play this game, everyone. Stay tuned. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I rename myself for you. I think we're doing great. Hi, Karus. Hey, Karus. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Carly. Hi, <laughs> <I> Carly. <laughs> the giant Man wave. Life. <laughs> that, that start, start the approach. Something that's wonderful. Because I, I trust them. Uh, I'm gonna approach since they've beckoned us, I guess. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can go now. Yeah. Uh, okay, so when you guys are getting uh, closer. This guy who's following the boulder is just going to kind of shamble around the hut this way. And meet this one right at the boulder uh, that you guys moved. And they're both going to just look at you and give this the, the classic single nod and each outstretch one of their hands toward the boulder and touch it. Um, and starting from the center of the boulder all the way front to their fingers and out to their palm, their forearm, to their shoulders and um, perforating out to the rest of their bodies, they'll just slowly turn to dust, frozen in the stance that they had when they touched the boulder. And at the point the boulder landed, you'll see at the last, after the last bit of them turns to dust, um, you'll see a topaz gem originate from the singularity at the center of the boulder and just plop onto the ground. Oh, fuck, we killed them! No. Oh, they're dead because of us. We threw the boulder so hard. Oh, now they're dead. <laughs> I did not mean to kill them. I would like that to be notated somewhere. I think this is the least aggressive route we could have taken, honestly. What? What the fuck? What do we do? Do you know you're a murderer of mass quantities? What do I do after <laughs> we kill someone we didn't intend to? Um, I believe what we have currently decided on is thoughts and prayers. Hmm. Okay. Do, do uh, what they might not have ever been real. Well, it might be uh, bad for the next people that walk through here. If they're not real. It could quite have been a visual experience that we all collectively had. Like here, that, none remember. of this. This could all be a simulation. We don't know. How do we, it's a very how weird area. Real? So how do we verify if they weren't? Am I real? Who's Magic, how would, would we verify real? if these Cyclops were real? Um, Why the well, fuck did they turn to dust, buddy? <laughs> uh, is what I would like to determine as Jim. So, How long until at the I turn to dust, <laughs> <laughs> existential yeah, dread you and crisis. Dust. Um, you in character, you would recall. Uh, this was, I believe, two sessions ago. Um, at the very beginning of before you even entered the hedge maze, somebody did a sort of arcana check slash detecting magic, 
and was able to learn that this entire place is just absolutely rife with transmutation and uh, illusion and uh, like three other schools of magic, but like transmutation and illusion were the most prominent of them. So it is extremely reasonable for you guys to assume that this is all could be an illusion. It could be all made up. It could reset when you leave for all you know. I just want to say it was me. I was the brain cell at that point, and I figured that out. <laughs> Excellent. Now, I will also bring up who will touch the topaz? Who is the bold one? I'll take the next chaos emerald. Excellent. Grabs. <laughs> uh, when you touch it, Aster, you will feel a familiar gentle breeze sweep in from the entrance you came in toward the exit in front of you. And the the hedges sort of ruffle in a familiar multitude of leaves sort of sound. This isn't one of those keys you're supposed to find, is it? Because those look like keys. Or well, maybe they look like topazes. I don't know. Only one way to find out. What I think we did this here. I get I... full. <laughs> There's such a thing as a topaz dragon. Let me consult the list maybe. that I received from the one wizard. Let's see what's next, huh? Okay. You said you were going toward the, the end? Yeah. Okay. Oh, these guys are gone. I should remove them. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw a picture up. And please... Uh, please keep in mind that this picture is slightly deceiving compared to what the actual look is right now. Uh, it includes a dragon. There is no dragon. Uh, Aster and company, as you walk through the Valley of pathway, <laughs> pathway in front of you, um, this one actually takes significantly longer than any other that you've encountered to this point. All of the pathways have taken anywhere from like three seconds to maybe a minute minute and a half at most to get to what was next in um this path takes about five five minutes a little bit more um before anything else happens so is there anything that you guys want to talk about or do during this during this time i would like to decide who would best adorn the color topaz um just in case it does end up being a dragon soul stone so i would like to see it held up to every person in our party and see who looks best with a topaz accent. So when you go to grab the stone, did you continue to hang on it or onto it, or did you like stow it away somewhere before leaving? Uh, I think Aster picked it up. Just to yeah, her. I mean, she probably just kind of like had it in her hand and okay. walked onward. Okay, so uh, when you walk onward and Icarus asks you to sort of hold out the stone, you open up your hand and there's nothing there. I hate when they pull this shit. Oh, that's a shame because I look really good in topaz. See, that's what I was thinking. It's because I have this lavender skin and these orange hands. Yeah, I thought the topaz like glow of a uh, soul stone would definitely be good oh, for well. Spunk. You win some, you lose some. But what if it's not a dragon soul stone? What if it's a cyclops so soul stone? Do we know what those do? Do we know? Do we know anything about this rock uh, there, before we just go around ingesting <laughs> it? Um, well, because that's what I fear will happen already. if we give this to Spunk. Well, the the stone's gone. Oh. Yeah, yeah Aster Aster went to hold it out, and nothing was in her hand. But there are other soul stones. Like I could be a gelatinous soul stone. <laughs> <laughs> I have so not encountered them yet, but I feel like a being powerful enough could figure it out. You could maybe even make soul stones for your cousins. Honestly, I know Aster saying it kind of just disappeared, but I'm pretty sure Spunk could have taken it already, and it could be like up his butt or something. <laughs> I well maybe, but I would make a show of it. Also, I don't know. That a soul stone of a grung would be super useful. Like, I don't know a situation in which you would need to be part tadpole. 
<laughs> I mean, you can crawl around on the ceiling and your tadpoles just kind of float around. So both of those could be it useful at times. Oh, but like, that's not because I'm a, that's not because of, I'm, I don't have sticky hands or anything. I just have really, really firm grip strength. Ah. And I held on to stalactites. I can't like climb anything. Look how slippery I am. He'll just run his hand on your cheek. <laughs> no. I'm very slimy. That's not conducive to climb. It's conducive to slide. To climb. climb. Do we think that this world is worth saving, everyone? <laughs> Juno says with, like, frog goo coming down the side of her no. face. I'm basically a glizzy. No. <laughs> oh. Is it Put me like a glizzy. I'm just a tall walking glizzy. You're not that tall. Just call me Glizzy McGuire. <laughs> the, the Glizzard Wizard. Nice. No! No, <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a wizard. It's, um, it's, um, some sort a of stuff. Glizzard. Uh, I was just gonna say Glizzard. And I was like, no, don't do it. Don't interrupt Tyler. I was like, don't do it. Yeah, I normally don't have thoughts worthy of not interrupting. <laughs> The Glizzard of Oz. Excellent. <laughs> gives, I, hold on, but like, that would be hilarious if he's like, Lion, you've been cowardly your whole life, but the bravery was in you all along. And he just gives him a hot dog. <laughs> and you, Tin Man, you didn't need a heart, you need a glizzy. <laughs> Weens and brown. Oh my god. Okay, so anyway, it takes about five minutes to get to the end of this to pathway. <laughs> Don't say a word to Scarecrow. Just put it in oh. and go boop. <laughs> <laughs> what oh now? shit. Okay. <laughs> so we get to the end of the pathway and I, here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, heck, I think I went on top. No. Ah, help. Take me to dinner first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you find yourselves at the foot of this stone stairway that you see at the at the base of the tower in this picture. Uh, again, there is no dragon. The picture is misleading, but um, <clears throat> see a stairway going up, and there is a there is a significant difference you notice about the tower first, Aster. Um, it is sorry, two significant differences. First of all, it is very much shorter right now than it seemed to be when you were when you caught it at various places throughout when you were going through the maze um and second it does actually appear to have a door at the top of the staircase where before it seemed just solid all the way around hmm. um you do also see a balcony going out of what would be in the shadow of this picture. So if you look toward the left face, uh, there is a small balcony uh, jutting outward that you did also see when your friend that you're trying to help out here and who has promised to, sh to give you the, the blue dragon mask uh, threw someone over the edge when he was being attacked and you do see a person's body on the ground at the base of the tower. Uh, I'd like to loot the corpse. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll a, a d12, please. D12. 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 Where is it? Is? Here we go. That's the button. <coughs> ten. Okay. You find ten gold and a dagger. Also, what is your passive perception, Icarus? Um, I'm sorry, I think you answered and I just didn't hear it. What's your passive perception? 17. 17. Okay. So 
while you're picking through this this person's uh pockets and robe you do notice that the the garb that this man is wearing at the moment um seems to be in line with some of the like middle ranking cultists that you've experienced to this point not like not like the entry level grunt but more so uh those that would have worked directly with some of the shadow warriors that you've seen so uh i was just checking if this guy over here was okay and um it, he's a cultist just in case anyone was wondering that's what i figured out and he's dead that too Uh, do we need to do anything about their death, or do we no, wish I mean, to continue? It was there was just a cultist, so I think we can just continue and help the friend that we came to help. The friend, ally, math. Uh, can we investigate the cause of their death? I think he was thrown over the balcony. Mm-hmm. We saw it. Yeah, you saw oh, that happen. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah never mind. Uh, do they have anything on their person? Uh, only what Icarus has found. No, I don't think they have anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was a question for me. My bad. No. <laughs> good, good in character all up there. Yeah. Um, the thingies. Um, yeah. Well, should we try to go inside? Yeah. Shall approach the door. I just had a great idea. Hmm? Why don't we offer this dude... I think I've heard this term before. Um, It's mask for mask. Didn't the other mask we have get destroyed? <laughs> that was like the whole point. Yeah, I think that's a gay term, but I don't know what it means. Oh. Well. Hey, Sim, I think I'm the only one who caught on to that. I'm real sorry, because I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> that was a solid joke. So we are entering. The, the, the castle is still here. You are entering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to group you guys up on the spot you're currently on. Living. And you're going to go dark for a second. <gasps> Can't see, because it's dark. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Come to sit with you again. <laughs> okay, here we are. Way down here. Whoa. Um few things to say about this before you make your next move. When you open the door, uh the second one of you crossed the threshold with your first step, all of you got kind of pushed into uh the room that you now see. Uh it is notable that the walls around you are circular despite the fact that the tower appeared to be a rectangular shape from the outside. Um, ceilings are about 10 feet tall. What else? Uh, here we go. The walls uh, bear exotic geometric designs representing feathers, eagles, and snakes. They're all rendered in a style that you've never seen before. Um, and then in the center of the room, you see a human female sprawled face down in a pool of blood. Wearing garb very similar, if not almost identical, to the person you saw outside who had died from his fall. Behind you, there is no door. And at the south end of the room, there is a small platform with a series of glyphs on the wall. I'm going to show you an image in a minute. And to your right, you see, uh, sorry, in the center of the room, just a few tables around a messy sort of sprawled carpet or, or rug rather and um long narrow tables across the north end of the room with a bunch of like random pieces of glassware and and flasks and 
little scratched out uh, individual pieces of parchment with notes. Uh, let's see. The image or the, the glyphics on the wall. Like this. Ooh. I'll keep this. Uh, really quickly. Uh... No, don't do it. Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Say nothing. <laughs> No, say it, say it, say it all. Hey, Icarus, I have a question for you. <laughs> no. Icarus? This feels like a trap. Yeah. Icarus? Yeah? Not you, I'm talking to Icarus. <laughs> so FYI, Juno and Icarus have swapped spots on the overlay. Icarus, do these glyphs look familiar to you in any way, shape, oh. or form? <laughs> oh, I saw I saw her screen flicker, and I didn't realize that we changed. There we go. I I'm in Icarus, hell on you earth. Are, you're useless. <laughs> Juno, would you like to help me out with this one? With some fucking glyphs, I guess. No, not you. I'm talking to Juno. <laughs> oh, my, my head hurts. I don't like it. You're Icarus, you silly Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to your sister Juno, the one over here rubbing their eye. I can't read for shit. Oh wait, I, I would like you around. to know uh while we are twins, we are fraternal. Uh <laughs> you, I am Juno. This is Icarus. Uh, yes, this has been identical. this has been corrected. It seems I was confused for but a moment. Your name tags were inverse. Um, yes, the name tags that we always wear during the sex. ones you constantly <laughs> wear to tell yourselves apart. No. Hi, my Hello, name my is <laughs> fill in the blank. <laughs> Something must distinguish us, for we are twins. My name is Elder Juno. <laughs> uh, um. So the glyphs look like Tetris pieces. Magic, I was literally about to ask uh, if the magnifying glass was one of the symbols, and then I realized that was the Z button. Oh. <laughs> um, so now I feel dumb. <laughs> um, it is. Uh, please also keep in mind the note at the bottom. For whatever reason, there is another symbol that's not pictured on this, but it's a, a symbol of two chairs. They're basically identical to the one chair it's just two of them side by side ah. i think i figured it out <clears throat> the one at the top left is a chair you're fucking brilliant <laughs> so so at the moment you see this guy you guys see this from afar and you're you're at the spots on the i'm gonna i'm gonna go by where you are and ask you to describe what you would like to do if anything or just keep talking about stuff that's cool I want to look for these symbols in the room. Yeah. Uh, like, not just, like, on the wall, but look for, like, I want to look for a chair. I want to look for a star. I want to look for an upside-down L. Uh, and, like, see if I can Skyrim this in just... Uh, the puzzle pieces are directly in front of me, and I just need to move them to their stations. Okay. Um, I understand that that might not be the case, but that is what I do know wish to do you icarus i juno <laughs> uh let's see so i think our intelligence is the same oh is it what do you think yeah, okay. the other items are a sideways hero mask uh <laughs> a smooth duck. i thought the sideways hero mask was definitely a an hourglass same uh, so while That's Spunk is talking line. through that, uh, Juno, you can make an investigation check. <laughs> 24. Ooh. Ooh, nice. Flipped paper hat at the bottom right. Um, so yes. yeah, you, you check every nook and cranny that you can find, of which there are not many. Uh, the most detailed places to check around, under, behind through etc would be uh this arrangement of chairs with that rug in the center of the room and then these tables that are around that northern third or so of the wall 
Um, even going through like the individual notes on uh, the few pieces of parchment that there are, checking on individual pieces of glassware, the flasks and the instruments that are on these tables, there is, you are confident, there is nothing resembling these symbols or any arrangement matching what these symbols look like or how they're sort of um, positioned relative to each other. Nothing resembling any of this. I've got a wild guess. It's like a teleportation elevator, and each glyph will take us to a different room if we hit it. So the chair will take us to the sitting room, and the, the, the clock thing will take us to the waiting room, and so on for the other ones, which I don't know what they mean. So we can just like tap them and they'll teleport us to different parts of the tower. Tap them where? On this sheet of paper? Yes, yes. Just right on them. I tap on the paper. <laughs> Are you the person who hits every button in the elevator? So I the- click the chair button. <laughs> There, this is this is like etched into the wall. It's it's stone, so it's not like a yeah. piece of paper. Yeah, um, this is like parchment. Uh, so you you go to the uh, sorry the the wall is down here. Oh, I thought uh, this was a parchment that we had. We were looking for the symbols in the room because I thought it was a piece of paper that had. My bad. I'll so I'll I'll say it a different way. Down here on the wall on this there's the, the circular line that Icarus just crossed, uh, that is like two steps leading up to a little platform, and these symbols are etched into the wall directly south of where Icarus is right now. And Juno was looking for those symbols to be anywhere else in the room, and she found that they are not. Are they on the cultist's body? Are they tattooed on them somewhere? <laughs> Ooh, okay. I'm going to use the same investigation check. Um, you, they are not. Uh, however, what is your passive perception, Juno? 20. Okay. You are able... It's 25 still. Don't worry. Nice. (laughs) So you are... You find no symbols, like, on this person in any way, whether, like, tattooed or carved. That's a little gruesome, but uh, not even, like, a piece of paper that has these symbols on it. However, there's one detail about this person that you are able to recall back i magic am forgetting if you guys actually took the dagger or if you just saw it but do you recall the dagger that varum the white had when you first found him i think one of you took it was that the mommy yes. dagger the dragon tooth dagger i have it yeah in- i think one of us has it i don't know who it is though yeah it could just be in the bag of holding it might be. be. Um, uh, either way, you... Because I know we took all of his shit. Mm-hmm. Including his yeah. robes. <laughs> uh, you would be able to see with with a good amount of confidence, Juno, that uh, the wounds on this person are slashing and stabbing wounds that um, they seem to match the like size and shape and depth of them match what you would expect that particular type of dagger to be capable of. So they were murdered by potential higher ups within the cult? Maybe. Uh, how long has this body been here? Ooh, medicine check. I'm a cleric. 29. Okay. Um, there is a point where it's difficult to tell like how immediate a death has been on, on a fresh body, but I'm going to say fresh. And from what you can, you can tell it could, it would be anywhere between maybe an hour to three to four hours. Does, does that mean that white person is here? Perhaps Talus the White, or someone else of that same rank? Yeah. 
I don't know how common it is for dragon tooth daggers to be in uh, existence. I've only encountered the one, so. I'm also going to officially commit to pushing one of these buttons that doesn't look like a button, and I'm going to I'm going to push the clock. The hourglass. The hourglass. Okay. Okay. Um Icarus, you push the hourglass and it uh, the etching in the wall glows with like a bright green and the platform uh, perimeter around you glows with the same green and it like pulse pulses on and off. It like goes on for a, a second and then goes off for a second and then on for slightly less time and off for slightly less time. It seems like this pulse is getting faster by the second. And everybody's able to see this. Yeah, so I think we're supposed to touch them. And maybe a certain combination? Or maybe we're not supposed to touch them. I don't know. Hmm. What does everyone feel like touching first? A triangle, a rectangle, a square, an upside down L, a flame, a hourglass, a star, or a chair, or two chairs? As you finish that question, uh, the platform glows solid green and poof, Icarus is gone. Everybody except Icarus, please remove your headphones for a second. Gosh. Oh God. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm just gonna turn my speaker way far down. Okay. Okay, Icarus. You, you sort of like, uh, how do I want to say this? It's as if all of the light and it was only natural light coming into the, or, uh, sorry, it was only like lit braziers inside this area. Um, it's as if they completely get snuffed out immediately. Uh, you don't really feel anything, but for a brief moment, you see a door sort of at the end of a of short hallway, maybe 20 feet, with um, lit flames in front of you. And somehow they seem like vaguely familiar to you. Um, at the moment, you don't understand why. You have a very brief moment to make like one move or make a thought if you want to try to discern anything about this, if you want, before the next thing happens. I think if they feel vaguely familiar, I would, like, reach out towards them or, like, move towards it. Okay. Uh, the second you take a step, you appear back in the very room you came from. And now you're, like, in this outstretched position, like, with your arm kind of halfway out and, and like, mid-step going forward. Okay. Everyone else? Headphones? No boy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thumbs up if you can hear me. Excellent. Okay, Perfect. so for the, for the rest of you, um, the platform glowed a bright gl green after that pulsing increased into a near constant state after a few seconds. Uh, he disappeared. The platform, for lack of a better phrase, turned off. Um, and now Icarus is back exactly where he was uh, after just a very brief moment. And now it's, it's like he made a quick move and he's got like his, his one of his arms sort of outstretched halfway and it's like he's mid-step. Um, and then the one thing all of you except Icarus knows, uh, Icarus, you can just, this is, you don't have to take your headphones off or anything. All of you notice that the hourglass symbol is uh it's almost like it's blacked out like there's almost like a black ink inside of the etching instead of just being the neutral stone that it was um well, what happened where did you go uh that's question what happened where did you go why did you go what happened I would like it to be answered in that order. Okay, what happened? 
Um, I think I like teleport somewhere else, blinked into like dimensional space. Um, where did I go? It was like um, a floating chamber, and there was a doorway with like sconces, and it felt familiar, so I like reached towards it. I think it's kind of hard to describe. Um, and then why? I mean, I just thought there were buttons we'd hit, so I hit them. And then that's all I got. It's kind of hard to explain, but I feel like that. Maybe next time we should all be on the thing before we hit buttons. Yeah, I'm kind of curious of like, did I hit the wrong button? Was that just part of it? Or like, you know, what? I'm confused. I also hope that because that's filled in, that didn't start some sort of timer that we're now up against. Maybe it's just you can't hit the same button back to back and it'll fill back out. Like it needs to be restocked like a vending machine. Start with a triangle. I was gonna say start with the star. I want to enter star power mode. (laughs) Very nice. I'm also curious if we could just hit the same one again and see what happens. Or shit some giggles. You get teleported to the nearest star. <laughs> <laughs> no. Or go in space. You're going to the sun. The gang goes to space. We will steal the moon. Break off episode. <laughs> Enjoy our time on the fing sun. <laughs> So I heard a lot of suggestions, but not a final decision. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, okay. This is scary. I disagree. Don't lie. (laughs) All right. uh, Lots of we should probably agree on what we slap next. Okay. Ulta, would you like to slap something? So, with the triangle. Is it, you want to do the star, right? Hit the star and see what happens. Now that we're all bunched Fucking up. Fucking muted. Can you say that on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> We've been right. 73 minutes, so you're good. Yeah. Uh, when Juno says that to Ulta, she's going to point over at Aster and say, I trust Aster the most. Let them pick. Oh. That's fair. I also trust Aster the most. Strange thing to do, but okay. Um, for some reason, I thought of the chair first. Let's try the singular chair. Boop. Slap it. <laughs> <laughs> A walk. We slap the chair, and by we, I mean Aster does. Okay. Come on, give me the good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you slap the chair, and nothing seems to happen for a few seconds. No glowing from the symbol, no glowing from the platform, nothing. Uh, but then you see the chair symbol sort of do this blackout like as if somebody was drawing it onto the wall in front of your eyes it gets this sort of blackout matching the hourglass but nothing else has happened I think that one takes us here Hmm. what about the double chair yeah let's try the double chair let's see if we can we can sync up okay go on two three (laughs) yeah. <laughs> you liked it, didn't you? you the gratifying hack. Perv. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's my, my favorite whistle. thing to do. That's my favorite thing to do when I make bread because like you have like the dough ball just on the counter and you just smack uh, it. You know, <laughs> there's there's a person's TikTok that's entirely that and I'm aroused by it. <laughs> to be honest. Nice. It's, it's like amazing. so hot, and I'm like, why is it bread? Why? <laughs> Who is why she? <laughs> bread? Bread is my attraction? I don't know. But... Okay, so uh, the. Oh, what are you guys doing over there? Symbol glows what are we doing green. Over here? Oh, no. <laughs> Let him explain. <laughs> <laughs> This, the symbol glows green just like it did with the hourglass at first. 
panic ensues. I can't do anything. <laughs> oh, <what's happening? laughs> oh man. Keep, uh, keep talking, corn dog. <laughs> uh, the platform does the exact same thing it did before. Glows a bright green on the perimeter and then turns off after a second and then pulses a little bit more quickly over uh, over time, over a few seconds, and then turns on completely and all of you just appear in this new space. It takes you a second to get your bearings, but you realize, yeah, this should work. Uh, you realize uh, that you're on balconies inside looking into the same space that you just were. This is especially strange because when you walked in, what you saw above you at about 10 feet high was solid ceiling. Must have been an illusion. Maybe. How do we get down? Jump. Is it just the solid wall like behind the balconies or is there more to go? Uh, yeah, it's just a solid wall behind the balconies. There is nothing up here except you guys, and you can see over the edge, you're only about 10 feet above the floor of the area you were just in. Can we is see the symbols? Maybe... Oh. Yep, the symbols are in the same place. They're they're at about the hand height of the, the average-sized people, so they would have been a little higher for uh, Ulta and Spunk, but they're now, you know, when you look over at them, they're in the same spot that they just were. Um, and you can see that the same two symbols are sort of blacked out that were before, but nothing else has changed about it. So are there symbols on the walls in the balcony too? Uh, there are not. Oh, okay. I was like, so we can like teleport or like hit them from our little areas here, but no. Hmm. I wonder if the walls are illusions too. Um, <laughs> trying to put my hand through it. Hand you know, we'll also rub the wall. Do you mean like the outer walls? Yeah, just the wall that's like opposite of the, like facing out into the room. The opposite of that. Okay. Um, yeah, you you touch the walls and it, as far, so far as you can tell, they are solid stone. See, but I feel like the only way to get down should not just be jumping off a balcony. I feel like even wizards wouldn't encourage jumping off a balcony. That feels absurd. Yeah. I jump off the balcony. Hey. Leap over the balcony and you are now on that lower level. Huh. It's only a 10 foot drop, so it's not all that difficult and you are fine. You know, it worked out. I still don't think it should be the only way. Uh, Icarus, as you're saying that, you glance up and notice that now again, there appears to be solid ceiling above you. And the rest of you can see Icarus. You can see him mouthing words seemingly to himself, but you don't hear him say anything. Can I hear them or no? Nope. You can't oh. see them. You can't hear them. I guess I'll just... Oh. Can I hit the two chairs again? See if it... Oh, they blacked out. Never mind. I'll just... Wait patiently for my friends to return from the war. Why is he not reacting to us? Can I attempt to cast a spell through this? You can. Um, I would like to use Thaumaturgy. And Bright, I'm going to need your help for this. Yeah. But I would like to cast Thaumaturgy to create a big fart sound behind my brother. <laughs> Just to How see if magic can penetrate this. On uh, a scale of 1 to 10, I need volume, wetness. And I want it to be... On the shorter side... Huh. But as wet as we can get it. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and then how loud? <laughs> as loud as you desire. Gotcha. Okay. All the way up. Yep. About right. That is the sound that I uh, <laughs> make with 
my Dungeons and Dragons spell, Thaumaturge. Excellent. Does anything bad happen? Can we hear the spell when it goes on? Does like do I get hit in the face with a fart? Kind of, kind of experiment. Um, you are able to. You can. F there's a sort of feeling of your magical energy for each of you when you when you understand that a spell is either successful or not. Like it's a different sort of vibe that you get, and Juno, you and uh, it, well, you hear nothing, but as far as you can tell, your spell was successful. Icarus, right behind you, you hear that. God damn it! I mean, <laughs> Lord, I mean, Lord God, here, fuck. <laughs> Mercool, damn it. So as we're, as we're standing on this balcony, Chrissy is going to turn... Uh, not Chrissy. Who? S who am I? Ulta? Am I? <laughs> Ulta is going to turn to Spunk and say, do you remember when that guy was pushed off the balcony? Did you Wait. see that? You watched it. We all watched it happen, right? We watched the murder. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sounds but familiar. didn't he try to, like, talk to us first? Like, didn't he see us first? You talking about the guy that was holding the giant hourglass in his hand? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Shouldn't we, like, saying, did we try the hourglass? No, no, this is Chrissy. Okay. Uh, that's what Icarus slapped, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. With the hourglass? Oh, okay. All Just right. now? Uh, before this. Oh, mm -hmm. I, uh, when when he disappeared the into thing. the other dimension and we all turned our heads off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was telling us, don't press the hourglass. Or maybe we all needed to be on the hourglass for it to work. Aster, how do we get down from here? Should we also throw ourselves off the balcony? I mean, I feel like there's more to it, but I don't really know what... Well, this is what we know so far, right? We know the hourglass goes to a magical place. Mm -hmm. We know that the chair goes to a dog. That was my dog in the background. Just kidding. <laughs> um, the, you couldn't like hear it, your dog, so it just kind of looked like you had like a mental fart. Yeah, sure. Uh, can oh, you hear it now? Heard there that. You go. Yeah. Heard that one. Oh. Yeah, she hears us all, and she's losing her mind. Um, so we know that the, the double chair and the chair come to these balconies. Mm -hmm. We know the hourglass goes to a magical place. So what are the- You think the, this is like a throne room or a chair room of sorts? Well, a chair makes me think of like an opera and we're on a balcony. Oh. But I don't. I'm not a puzzle person, guys, so I'm just <laughs> telling you now. A couple folks here have seen me try to do puzzles. Not the best. Can I, I want, can I jump down? Like, can I just hop back here, like, through there? I forgot. The Icarus, did you climb down or did you just jump, like, wholesale? I forget. I can't he, tell you. He just, he just jumped down. You saw it happen. You were oh, able I to see it. him. Yeah, you were able to, all, you were all able to see him just kind of like, eh, let's try it, okay. and, and kind of, like, mantle himself hold him. Little froggy hop back down. Uh... Okay, and uh, so we Icarus. Looking at this body before though, and uh, while Icarus is doing his thing, I would like to search this guy for like objects, anything he might have, like notes or a key or something. Okay, um, roll a d12. Sure. And Icarus, uh, after a few seconds of like, what the f what the hell was that? Uh, and trying to figure out what's going on here, you see Spunk just kind of like appear through the ceiling and plop on the ground right next to this body and just immediately go to kind of searching it. Um, those of you on the balconies see this happen. Uh, and however Icarus reacts, you also see Spunk 
you find five gold pieces on this body and literally nothing else. Five gold pieces, though. Not for nothing, but okay. So the only thing I don't get is... Oh, thank you for joining me. But um, the only thing I don't get is... Why can't we hit the buttons a second time? What's the point of a balcony you can only go to once? Icarus, what's your passive perception? 17. As you're asking that, you do notice that the double chair symbol is not blacking out like the other two did. I run over and hit it. You run over and hit it? Yeah. Same symbol? Yep. Uh, Ulta, you see Icarus run toward the wall, slap it, and pop, it appears right next to you. Woo, I figured it out. Okay, so that now we know that one works multiple times. So how did you sort out that that one works multiple times, but the other one doesn't work multiple times? Um, I thought it changed colors and it didn't. So. Oh. Where? I'm not okay. over here, but did it only work multiple times because we're still up here? Like if you we can... all leave this place. So Juno, uh, everybody, everybody who's on the balconies can see and hear everyone. Ex oh, well, sorry. You can see and hear the pe the other people on the balconies, either one, um, and you can see the people on the level below you, um, but cannot hear them. If you're on the level below, you cannot see, you see solid ceiling above you and can't hear any conversation up there. Just to sort of level set. So Juno, you did hear all of this conversation other than Icarus and Spunk. So uh, Ulta is going to say again, out loud to folks and I can't find the handout now I'm trying to find it uh, da, 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 da. it is Where's called the for this? Uh, it's in your journal and it's oh, called it Zonthal's okay. Tower Teleportation Panel she so she's going to, to say like I feel like just taking some guesses as to where we would go if we hit these places makes sense right so now we know like chairs are the balconies we know that the the little thing is the thing so what do we like i personally think that that right hand like the triangle that reminds me of the way that the sundial looked so but i also think the star might be like an outside thing or like Perhaps the roof or like, somewhere where you could see the stars from. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, like, like that's what I'm yeah. trying to think of. Like how, where? like, so the, what, what was could the wizard's name, mean? by the way? Was it Is Shelly? Zonthal? <laughs> no, not the Is Iskadar? Iskander. Is yeah. Is Iskander. <laughs> <Abracadaniel. laughs> well, I only know that because of my notes. I'm His looking at it Abra right now. Daniel. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to piece so, things together. Can I piece together, like, is there any way to see outside? Uh, there's currently not. Okay. I would like to remember where on the tower uh, Abracadaniel was standing <laughs> when he was waving the hourglass at us. Ah, uh, okay. So, that yes, that's a good question. That would be on the balcony that was actually on the outside of the tower, and you did see that on the outside of the tower as you came up to the door okay. to come in in the first place. So you know for sure that balcony is outside. It was at the, at the, you said, was he at the top, did you say? Yes. Was there anything else at the top, like a symbol or like a bell or... Uh, your passive perception? Uh, perception? Let's see. Yeah. Because this is a sort of retroactive, like, recalling yeah. the atmosphere sort of thing. It's, it's 17, you said? Yeah. Uh, you are very confident there was not. It's very plain and bare, everything on the outside. Huh. But did Perhaps that triangle a was a railing? Or not the triangle, but the upside-down L-shape? I'm thinking maybe the box takes us to Iskander because he's a box. He, he's not a box. He won't be described as like a box. I think that's like huh? an insult for a person. But it's no, a... I think we might just need to explore. Or you maybe know like, what? I'm. I like go slap some. 
I'm gonna run up and hit the star because I'm the okay, downstairs okay. and I don't hear this conversation happening. Follow it down. Follow it down. <laughs> and, uh, when Spunk runs, runs I'm going to look down over the balcony <laughs> and see what the fuck Spunk is pressing. Yeah, so he I you run. you do see him sort of like hurriedly hopping toward the insight would allow me to know he's up to some dumb shit. <laughs> um so the second <laughs> I see his little floppy hands moving, I'm like, oh fuck. Yep. Okay, so Juno, you're peering you're peering over. Yeah, I'm trying to see what the fuck he's going to slap because I know he's up to something dumb and we need to get down okay. there and follow him. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, so yeah, that, that happens. And My Spunk, favorite. you you all see Spunk uh, hop over and slap the star, you said? Yeah, because that's the one that Juno said earlier. So I'm going to be like, okay. you know what? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, all of you are able to see that the star symbol on the wall glows green exactly as the hourglass did at first and exactly as the chair did at, sorry no the chair didn't do anything but exactly as the hourglass did at first and the perimeter of the platform glows green and after a second turns off and after a little bit less time turns back on and you you know you have a couple seconds before something happens does anybody want to do anything i feel like we should jump in so that yep. it, it doesn't get teleported alone. Yep, I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going. Yeah. Yeet. We're all yeah, going to... I'll also yeet myself off the ledge. High School Musical. Get down to that panel. High School Musical Thank jump you. in unison. At, like... I think what happens is we like the panel cuts and you after Spunk hits it and you just see everyone else instantly react to jumping off a ledge. Yeah. Like Like, mid sentence, ah, shit, kind of just like falling out of all of our mouths. Yeah. Just careening over the edge of these. uh, Okay. So Spunk runs up to this platform, slaps it, and we start seeing the flashing lights that we we definitely in character now know means uh, something's about to happen. Everybody has this, oh shit, like leap over the balcony or dive at the platform sort of react. Is it literally everyone or did anybody not go? I think it'd be fucking it all... but I think I would go. <laughs> yeah, everyone, um, but Icarus keeps, uh, gets to keep their headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so you didn't go Icarus, or, or did you? No, no, I was saying that I think it would be funny if I didn't, but I feel oh. like I would. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I'm sh- shifting you all together, and at the at the final flash where it stays green for a second, and then poof, you're gone. You do appear in a new space, but looking at our time, this sounds like a perfect opportunity for us to take a quick breather and leave our audience in suspense for about five minutes. <laughs> We'll be right back.
here we are. Yay. Excellent. Hey, hello. We're back. We're in the the middle of a puzzly teleporty tower. Um and the last move made was Spunk running up to the teleportation panel and slapping the you said star, right? Um, correct. Okay. So we went through the whole thing about um the glowy, the flashing glowing happening at this point, you guys are definitely able to clock that that's a sort of timer to indicate we're about to move somewhere now. Um, and then when it glows, it finally stops and glows solid after a few seconds of that timer, um, it will teleport you. Because now, oh, damn it, I keep doing the wrong thing, sorry. Yep, that's what I did. <laughs> The joys of having multiple keyboards and mouses. Um, here we are. You all appear at or on the platform. Here. Hello, did it shift you? Oh, it was at not. the bottom of the screen. Actually. At the bottom mm -hmm. of the screen. Yeah. <gasps> I, we were right. It's a top of the screen. It's a cannon. So well, it's a cannon. Okay. I fucking hope it's a cannon. That'd be. Um, it's it's a shove it in the bag of holding. Oh. So there are uh now that you've been in mo in more than one place, um there are a couple things that in character you would realize. And out of character, and even during intermission, you talked about a couple of things. And I would like to bring those to light because especially to boost those of you that said things, uh, you were actually pretty on the mark with a lot of your thoughts. So, in character, you would realize the star has brought to you brought you to what looks like an observatory. What is in the middle of the room is a large telescope peering through a, a big uh, slit in the ceiling and it's kind of, it looks like a domed ceiling above you. Um, and Icarus, you said something else. Uh, do you remember what that was and what I asked you to repeat? Yes, I was saying earlier that in my confusion, recounting what happened when I hit the, the hourglass, I was saying that I was confused because like, it felt as though I was like drawn to something, but I couldn't reach it. So it almost felt like I was not supposed to be there yet. Because okay. like, it something felt important and was pulling me, but no matter how hard I tried, I didn't have enough time to reach it. So that was kind of my thought. Um, okay. Collectively, given again, given your overall intelligence stats across the party, uh, that would make something else click for you. Oh, before I get to that, star, observatory, chairs, a room that had a bunch of chairs in the center of it. Sitting room. So, Chrissy, you were actually not doing a dumb with that. <laughs> um mind blowing for me right now. <laughs> if I could mark this on a fucking calendar, uh, I would. Uh, and Icarus, um, as you explain that, I'm going to say pretty much all of you would have this like light bulb aha moment. Iskander held up an hourglass and told you this is the key to meet me in the dungeon. Icarus, you saw what very much looks like the entrance to a dungeon, but only for a moment after touching the hourglass. I forgot about the dungeon part. <laughs> I, I did want to bring that to light again because I think that was like two or three sessions ago and mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if people forgot that detail. But in character, it would be an absolute like, oh yeah, duh, kind of moment. Okay, so the observatory in front of you. Let's see what we have to say about this. Um, the space in front of you is clearly the workplace of a wizard. A pair of voluminous tomes on astronomy and astrology lie open on a table. That would be to your south, right where Aster is. And a massive telescope of brass crystal and polished mahogany rests in, in the intricate stand in the middle of the chamber. A ladder is resting against one wall uh, to the north. Sorry. 
yeah, the, the like northwest, like leading up to the lens of the of the telescope, and an immense crystal lens is embedded in the ceiling. What would you like to do? Sorry, what's embedded in the ceiling? A giant crystal. It's about 30 it's feet. Coming through this door, or is there any sound behind this door? Like, does it sound like wind, potentially a balcony? Uh, from where you stand, you're not really able to hear anything. I want to look through the telescope. Okay. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'm going to sneak towards this door. I'm going to look on the wall behind us and see if the buttons are still on that wall. Okay, looking behind you, all the symbols are still on the wall and the hourglass and, sorry, the hourglass is blacked out. The chair is not. Okay. Um, Juno, what did you say you were doing over here? Sneaking towards the door. Okay. To um, listen to see if that, like if Spunk is right and this is in fact, if it's like the highest level if okay. this is the balcony. But I'm not trying to open it just yet because I also remember that there were murderers up here. Okay. Um, so you can make an investigation check. We're using hearing. That's a flavor thing because nothing is impacting hearing versus sight right now. Anybody else? Well, uh, someone whose uh, special project is um, learning how to navigate via star charts and things. Um, Aster would like to look at these books and stuff at the table. Okay. Uh, it's a 19. Make a general just an intelligence based check. Uh, let, actually, let's, let's do history. Let's do a history check. Okay. Ooh, 22. Okay, Juno, uh, you don't hear anything on the other side of this door at first. Um, no, no magic. We're just <laughs> supposed to stop this sentence. Uh, you, you definitely don't hear any wind or any other like recognizable outdoor sounds. However, recalling back to your time in the maze and about the time the brief time you would have spent between the end of the maze and the door coming into this place, you would have you would recall that the the day was calm and the air was like still. So there's not really to expect anything other than maybe like an animal chirp, like a bird chirping or any sort of sound like that. It would be in line with what you observed before. But after a few seconds, you do hear the soft patter of a couple of footsteps just maybe three or four footsteps and then they stop um aster paging through these books you see a ton of i'm gonna say you, you haven't done too much with with books to this point at least of this type right with no. like hist history astrology astronomy not really okay um the level of detail in these books is immaculate. It's it's charts, it's patterns, it's um, recognizing uh, symbols in the sky over time and, and how they look differently during different seasons and all sorts of descriptions in common of, uh, you know, tracking these patterns, what they might mean, um, and even some details of like what the natural world around this place is like at those varying times, basically mapping out seasons relative to what the night sky looks like. The uh, yeah, like I said, the level of detail is is crazy in these books. What else? Well, Spunk is currently looking through the telescope. Oh, I'm sorry, I, for I forgot about that. Um. Yeah, you look through the telescope and um, you're actually, when you when you kind of like put your hands on it, you realize that it actually moves really easily. Uh, despite how humongous it is, 
uh, the the lens and uh, and shaft itself are kind of like suspended by a series of ropes and ch ropes and chains on the ceiling, but it's surprisingly easy to just like nudge it a bit and be able to shift it around within its limits. Um, when you look through it, uh, you, at first you get like a really bright glare, and then you're able to shift it around and you see uh, some specks of white in a in a sort of light blue sky. Uh, nothing really of all too much detail, but you do recognize that it is sort of middle of the day, so this is kind of expected. Cool, 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 um, I want to move it so it's looking in a totally different direction. So it is, it does have limits. <laughs> it does have limits. You're not able to just like spin it around. Um, it, it is kind of like the lens is actually poking through a hole in the, in the ceiling. So it does sort of stop within that rectangular oh. sort of slit. Yeah. Um... But you are able to shift it like significantly within that parameter. If you want to. Maybe I'll leave it alone because if it's sticking out, I didn't think about it potentially going mm, out the dome. I don't want to give away our position because Juno is taking great care to be quiet. I will. I mean, I was going to open the door when Magic was like, anything else? And I was like, I'm not fucking open it if it doesn't sound like anyone's out there. Yeah, but I don't want to be sucking on the fat end of this telescope while you're doing that. So I'm going to sit down. <laughs> on the floor underneath the telescope eye. It's very quiet in here, so you're just going to hear the sounds of like his thighs going flap on the floor. And they'll silently echo through this quiet room. Wait, there isn't anything else we're supposed to actually do here? What if there's just like not really things we're supposed to do. Yeah, I think we're just trying to find that guy. Mm -hmm. And like, he's not here unless he's on the other side of the door. Open the door, Juno. No, oh, fucking open it. Um. Actually, I don't just open it. I'm going to kick it open aggressively to terrify anyone on the other side if there is anyone there. Okay. Uh, make an intimidation check. Happily. Ooh, 15. Okay. So scary, everybody. Look at me kick this fucking door. God damn it. <laughs> Does it turn anyone on in the room? You guys like this? <laughs> See a little bit of my pale, skinny leg busting open this door? Very pale. Uh, okay. Shoot. All right, you kick the door open and you see, like it, it, it does swing outward and sort of like half slams on the little bit of stone, uh, that it's hinged onto, but like the hinges sort of like creaking and and stretching metal uh, at the same time creates this like horrible screech sound at first. And you see three people in red robes, which is different from what you're used to seeing from cultists so far, uh, like in the process of just whirling around and looking at you at the door, all three of them are wide eyed. Um, I'm gonna and the, yell, who's ready to fucking die and cast thaumaturgy <laughs> to crack thunder in the room. Nice. Um, <laughs> all, th crack thunder. all three of them are gonna like Looking give it- for the loudest, crackliest thunder you can find. Oh, do we have one coming? Okay, I'll wait. But like, when you say crack thunder, Not do you mean wet. actual <laughs> thunder or do you mean thunder? I mean thunder now. Now that oh. you've brought it up. I think that would just confuse them. Good. <laughs> Please don't water around my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
so far around the echo. kid. <laughs> the echo is what's really important. Thing. Excellent. Yeah. 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 Very <laughs> okay. Um, as you do that, all three of them are going to just whirl around and look at you with this surprised look on their face. And as they sort of turn to each other at the same time, almost as if in unison, they, they reach into like the breast of their robes and all three pull out a piece of parchment paper and rip it. Um, all three of them are going to appear to like start talking to each other and you can't hear anything as just as the giant, the Cyclopses did in the maze when you went through that room, they all start to turn to dust as well as the pieces of parchment that they ripped in half and they disappear. Were they even real? Everyone, I scared the shit out of them. That was them. <laughs> also, they are now dust. Does the paper turn to dust too? Yes. See, but now I'm like, did they cast something or did they just, were they never real to start? What was that? Like, are they transporting somewhere? Yeah. Are they um, you guys are all advanced enough with using and or observing different uses of magic that you would have been able to clock this as not casting a spell, but really more activating a magical item. So they were real. Would I think that I could cast Greater Restoration and bring one of them back? You would know in character that's not possible. What about resurrection? I don't think I have that spell yet. I'm that sorry. that would be possible if they died. Oh, cool. Thanks. I guess Vicky's hand and push her off the bridge. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have counter spell. I don't have <laughs> the urge to push Hugo off the balcony. I'm not on the balcony, am I? I'm in a room. Are you not this one here with the forehead? That's Aster. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, one. Uh, Wait, what game do you play when we come here? <laughs> yeah. Do you not know what any of us look like besides oh, us telling you over and over and over again what we look like? No, you all look the same to me, except, uh, I guess, for Ulta. She's the only one whose nose I can't see up. Yeah, that's true. true. Sorry, everybody's cameras were all funky yeah. there for a little while. The I realized I was doing time. stuff on the wrong keyboard. <laughs> My bad. Off one. Her big gecko eyes <laughs> constantly, whereas you all could do better jobs cleaning. Hey. Oh. Sorry, I don't have prestidigitation. It's not. Not my brand. Wait, what? Press, press the digitation. It allows you to clean yourself. Oh, oh, you could clean your boogers with. Oh, that'd be so satisfying. I don't have that like, spell. I like my hey, boogers pow. exactly where they are. <laughs> I can <laughs> press the digitation and clean off spunk. Oh, that'd be so cool. Snap your fingers and clear both lines at the same time. And then Icarus does exactly that. Because I don't do it to myself, I do it to spunk. <laughs> Push out those two champagne corks you've been hiding up there. No. Oh. Good God. Me. <laughs> so, do we need to like catch those red wizards, or? I don't think we can, even if we wanted to. Well, we could try the elevator and go to a different room, and maybe. Mm -hmm. find there. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're all searching for the same guy, probably, right? At this point. No. Looks like he's trying to stay alive. So maybe we beat them to wherever he is. Go slap some more things? Yeah. So what do you guys think the other ones mean? I'm really curious of the the box just because it's so bland. So they turned to dust. I've just had so like, many experiences. 
Would that have anything to do with like cremation? Would it have anything to do with fire? Can it like rise from the ashes? Is it ash or dust? Ooh. It was dust. The rubber duck. Yeah, it's not like it's not like they burned away to ash. Think like Thanos snap dust. I wonder if that's like maybe a furnace kind of room or something, because they're probably like heating or something like that, like fireplaces. Or an incinerator. That kind of thing. Or or like a kiln? You know, or like the level of hell in which uh, <laughs> yeah. rains. I don't. I don't know the fire. Oh, that sounds know. interesting. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. do that one. Slap the fire. Yeah. Standing on the teleporter, I push the fire button. Oh my god! Ah! Run! I run. I gallop across the room. Part of me just wants to give up trying to catch up. I'm. S what if you were to jump through the teleporter just as it went off and you get splinched? <laughs> Quiet. Splinched. Yeah, it's where part I've of heard you that teleports. term in a minute. <laughs> Pieces of you teleport somewhere, but not all of you goes. I'm gonna stand half on, half off the circle. Is that oh. like the premise of the punch escrow? What? Look. Why does the escrow? I don't know. Did you oh, that's what it's called. The punch escrow. <laughs> so where did we land? On a decision? We're the slapping point. the fire. I touch fire. Slapping the fire. Okay. Slap it the base. Why can't I see? Oh, is one of you behind another token? Yes. Okay. Don't worry. Don't move. Icarus is underneath Aster. Oh, my bad. Playing power bottom. <laughs> no need to move. Wait, I wasn't underneath Aster. Yeah, what? Oh, no need to move. wait. Oh, I always get you to confuse. You look so much of the same. <laughs> Please tell me you're saying I look like my twin. Because if I look like anyone else, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> you and okay. Ulta are the same, didn't you know? All you noble races. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to describe this and then put your tokens back on the map. Um, oh, you end up in a uh, an open room, the middle of which contains uh, basically an open large bonfire, uh, about ten feet in diameter, inside a like a three foot high or so wall of stone. Um, and sprawled across the wall, um, basically from, it's, it's in like the one third or so of the full circle on the outside of the wall is occupied by the assembled bones of a dragon. And as you sort of take this in and get your bearings, five people in red robes come charging at you and we need to roll initiative oh boy don't worry they'll just turn to dust we are here wait for them to rip their papers guys <laughs> wait for it wait for it step 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 ow ow wait for it <laughs> <laughs> uh, initiative, Icarus. Yeah, bitch. Aster, third. Juno, 15. It's twin time, I have said. Yeah, twinsies. <laughs> Matching outfits and everything. Hold us, 17. Part of the cards. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> okay. Um, these guys are coming at you, Spunk. You are able to spring in action first. They are clearly hostile. What do you want to do? Clearly hostile. Well, that's not good. Um, let's just measure twenty feet real quick. Oh, 
Oh, that's pretty good. I guess I could put it right there. One, two, three, twenty. One, two. Oh, maybe a little closer. Yeah. I'm just trying to gauge how far twenty feet is. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's great. So starting like, say right here, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, shake my belly until the little orange spots start to glow on my stomach. And that glow is gonna grow really big until my belly starts to inflate, you know, kind of like I had the White Castle after 3 a.m. <laughs> and he's going to glow really bright like a light bulb and he's going to cough out <clears throat> a fireball as it spews into the room. It's going to hit these back four, but not this guy. Okay, that's a deck save, to right? to make dexterity saves. Yeah. The DC is 20. Beach. Nope. <laughs> Sayonara. Too bad, so sad. <laughs> I'm going to roll damage now. It's going to be hilarious. Oh, it took you a long time to develop all those dice, didn't it? You leave behind. 33 fireballs damage. Wow, there was two sixes and two fives in that roll. God damn. You see all four of them immediately become incinerated. <laughs> now they're ash. <laughs> you see These are all ashes. the four of them part. Look at the fifth one and say, Welcome to Spunk's Interrogation! That's for you! What a perfect thing to do in the fire room. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Very on brand, very thematic. Ooh. Add to the drama. And that's Uh. Drama. Nope, can't do that. Okay. Do All right. Anything me? else, Spunk? Yeah, I do have one. Yeah, I like that one. Almost as good as a fireball. He's <laughs> weird. I like that. That's yeah. a good sound. Keep that on the board. I honestly like that better than the fart. And it was a loud gunshot. So. Meanwhile, back at Baldur's Gate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, okay, Ulta. <laughs> uh, as Ulta sees all of them except for one go down, she's gonna be like, well, what the fuck? The left one. Uh, and she's just gonna walk up and do her three, her three attacks. Okay. So a 25 and a 13. Both of those will hit. Okay. <laughs> and then a D8 for my swarm. So 18 and then the third with the crossbow. Yep, that'll hit as well. With nine or more. Okay. A quick fireball from Spunk immediately incinerates four of these guys to oblivion, and three quick moves from uh, Ulta will bring the f the last one almost to its knees. He's having a bad time already. Anything else? Put your finger in his mouth. I'm gonna put my finger in his mouth. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Icarus. He, when he opens his mouth to death gurgle, I'm gonna go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait. Tickle, tickle, Icarus and I have the same. <laughs> Icarus and I have the same uh, thingy. You have the same uh, initiative, but different modifiers. <gasps> oh, so I I Icarus does go first. I wanted to go. I'm sorry. Ah. 
Did you want this turn, you want this turn sister? I did, but it's... I look, at, I look at her, I'm like, what, did you want this kill? And then I pull out my bow. Uh, as you say that, I just respond with, I mean, I can speak with him if he's alive or dead, so I guess if you want it. And then, and then I'm just... going to stare my blackened eyes at the four cultists. Uh, that's a 22 and a 25 to hit. Yeah, both of those hit. That is 24 piercing damage. Okay, uh, yeah, you don't even need the second hit because the first one just, like, pops him square in the chest and he immediately goes limp, is clearly dead, and we are out of initiative. I'm sorry, I didn't have any fire I could use. I hope that was satisfactory. Good job with a two, like, elevenths initiative. <laughs> I, um, I, I, I look up to the sky, to the sky, and I say, was that enough to level up, God? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, okay, so our timing was a little off today, uh, but I always promise two breaks per session. This is looking like a perfect opportunity for us to take a quick one again. So we'll be back in, in like five minutes. Sound good.
these are just science experiments. Is the yummy just painful? The way my panels are set up is that it's me, Chrissy, Bright on one side, and Magic, Heck, and Hyacinth on the other side. And I need you to know that my side of the class is the side that treats our bodies like they're science experiments I, with I, no I regard Excellent. to consequences. <laughs> I'm this ship's so an amusement aware. ride. You know, I'm riding funny. it till the rails come off. Well, now this is something our audience <laughs> knows about us. Right it's, like, it's like we're talking to future scientists, telling them that, did you know the cereal turns your shit green? And they're like, yes, we read your journalistic review. We were Up not here. impressed. Excellent. Up here and then the we look at them with big, big, stupid <laughs> eyes going, you stand on the shoulders of giants. Of giants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a scientist. Oh, I feel like we need to. I need to make a bloopers reel, yeah. and that's going on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we're here. Um, Wait, live here or here? Here? Live here. <laughs> um, I mean, you are so good about letting us know all of this the past two times. Yep. Sorry, internet. <laughs> no, you're not. Don't lie to them. I'm not nah, sorry. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we I have, want to seem like a reasonable person, but I'm a we scientist. Have, we have a terrible time back. here. I'm insincere. <laughs> I'm in uh, the CCRPG space. Yay! <laughs> Excellent. <Okay>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> God damn it. Uh, we're, in, we're, in, <laughs> we're in the fire room now. There's this dragon skeleton sprawled up on the wall in front of you and a bunch of uh, incinerated slash dead bodies sprawled across the room in front of you what would you like to do i'd like to put them in the incinerator wait can i talk to one of them before we shove them in an incinerator uh, yeah no i don't actually need to shove it in the incinerator that's really dark I just... uh well they're they're dead do you have like a speak with dead kind of thing yeah i do baby okay then yes i'm a cleric while that's happening uh i'm gonna pick his pockets well, he's yeah. having a conversation with Juno. Okay, which one no. are you doing this with? The one, the one that you're at. The one that Ulta just sliced up to smithereens, um, because they weren't, in fact, incinerated. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this guy's mouth might work a little bit better than the people who just. Well, the funny thing about magic, I mean. I'm just going to this one, magic. <laughs> okay. Um... Astrid I don't rules my person that much. The rules in our magic book actually state that the mouth <laughs> has to be intact, actually. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Um, I don't think you can use that spell because there's no mouth to speak from. Fun fact, there is a mouth intact. There's just like no lips. Uh you know, yeah. Uh but yeah, yeah this I, this is I the most like spell. still intact. Have you ever tried to speak with no lips? <laughs> Try it right now. I'm not, I'm... Really hard. <laughs> Just don't make him say anything with the letter M in it. <laughs> we will be fine. I'm, I was oh about to do God. so much weird shit with my mouth, and I'm like, you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, like ripping it apart. Oh, no, hell. I can't speak with dead on this guy, but I need to remind myself what the spell does. Did it cast in here? No? Okay, cool. I love that for me. <laughs> If there's anything we learned from the D&D &D movie, dot, dot, dot. It's unique. Yeah, dragons oh, are beautiful get... at every size. I know. Oh, it's like, I know if you speak with dead, you get five questions. Yes. Uh... Does this count as a question? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There. I thought... You were gonna say if we learned anything from that movie, it's that there, the it's not rules as written. It's actually very close slash actually accurate on all accounts. Well, let's ask. But she wild shaped into an owl. Yeah, fuck that. That's I that's mean, a rule of cool. Druid is to get wild shaped into owl bears. <laughs> Maybe she had a scroll. You beat me to it. I was so upset. Uh. <laughs> I was ready. I had my hands on the top of my titties and everything. I was <laughs> ready to be mad. It's like how we're twins, but you came out of the womb first, so you beat me to every punchline. Yes. There you go. Okay, so Speak um, With Dead is cast, and... So uh, I can ask up to five questions. 
yeah this this dead body kind of like jolts and and then kind of and just slumps and looks up at you guys remember to ask the fifth one otherwise he'll never find peace that could be a reasonable alternative um question for you whom do you serve The Queen of Dragons, of course. Fuck that. Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> what were your plans here? Research into that. And a sort of like belabored gesture he's able to make with his dead arm pointing at the wall containing the dragon skeleton. Don't want them to have that. I don't need any resurrected dragons. Um, okay. Do you or any of your companions have anything of importance on you? I have no idea what is important to you, but was was important to us, yes. Like Hyacinth, I can't hear you when you cover your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would pick it up, okay? Um, you should ask Icarus <laughs> gonna say, not Hyacinth. <laughs> I know, I was yelling at Hyacinth because Hyacinth was this blocking is, his entire mouth. It's the dummy. Um, you, should, <laughs> <laughs> you should ask how to get to the to the hourglass room like quicker or to get to the dungeon entrance. We'll see. Let's see if I can. Where were you to go next after this tower? My assignment has been this tower and only ever this tower. Sorry, I'm gonna ask this one instead. Um, What did you say to recruit others to your cause? I would like essentially their testimony. <laughs> uh, if you've ever been to a Mormon church, you would know what that's about. <laughs> it happens once a month. Um, I, I hate to do this to you, corndog, over the table, but it is true in game. Uh, he responds, I recruited no one. And the body slumps over with a soft sort of gasp sound. I hate to say it, but I told you so. You just didn't, but I told you so. <laughs> so was this uh, I'm going to go only... look around for more mouths. I was like, was this something that only Juno heard or did we all hear? It was what? a conversation that you all saw and heard. Yes. Okay. Um... Given that Aster would like to look at the dragon skeleton, maybe try to look at the research and figure out if this is from a black dragon. Uh, or no, what, we, what? we fought a green dragon. Green. You mean the one that you fought uh, in the cave? With Naren Bane, yeah. Okay. Um, so, make a... I'm going to make this a mm, perception check. Okay. Um, 
while she's checking that out, I'm gonna say, Sister, instead of asking them questions, I'm gonna point to the dragon skull and say, Can you speak with that dead? Speak with that dead? Uh, okay, so as that's happening, Aster. Uh, no, the spell is called Speak with That Undead. She can never <laughs> cast that spell ever again. <laughs> um, Aster, you notice that uh, overall the bodily structure, uh, or the, I guess, yeah, the the structure of, like, the body from, from back of the neck to tail is very similar. Um, only minor differences between what you would have seen from the green dragon versus what's on the wall right now. Some amount of that, I'm going to get in some detail here because you rolled a fucking 29. Uh, <laughs> some amount of that, you know, for sure can be attributed to the fact that, you know, the, the body you saw was, was filled in. It wasn't just bones. So it had muscle and skin and scales, um, bodily liquids or bodily fluids you know everything to sort of fill in so you didn't just see the bone structure the wings would be the biggest tell at first because there's so it's such a thin layer of all that other stuff around the bone mm -hmm. there is a difference in the like length of the uh he man heck if over the table if anybody knows the answer to this it's probably you what is there a, a name i'm assuming there is for like the structures that the webbing goes in between on like bat wings. Um, I mean, they're essentially like, are, are you talking about like the digits basically? Cause those are basically modified digits. Okay. Um, um yeah, I'm talking like on the wings, there's like the membrane slash skin yeah, that the makes the wings, the... but then there's like the actual cartilage or bone structure that they web between. Yeah, exactly. Those, those are essentially modified digits. Okay. Um, so those, in the Our... scientific world, we call them scrote ribs. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, my God. That's okay. Great. That's out there now. Or You're a scientist, Heck. <laughs> We're scientists. Uh -huh. uh, those have a... They're, they're slightly um, thicker on this bone structure than you would saw on the green dragon, and they have a little bit more length to them. You know that some of that could be attributed to age difference, but... The overall size of the skeleton tells you that the age of this versus the green dragon you encountered is nearly identical. So age difference is probably not a factor here. And then when you get to the head, that's where you see the biggest difference. Um, the green dragon was a little bit more like a stout snout um, and not much for detail on the like on or around the skull. This skull has two humongous horns jutting outward and then forward. You've seen depictions of this before, but you've never seen this creature in the flesh before. I have a question. Yes. Uh -huh. the, when they point forward, do they angle downward or do they point slightly up as well? Like the horns, do they go, is it a swoop or is it like a straight right angle and they come to a cone? Oh, the, it's, it's, it's more of a swoop, and they do end up pretty much straight forward relative to the nose. Okay. That means he's horny, you guys. <laughs> oh, he's not oh angry. God. I knew that's where that was going. <laughs> do we want to try speaking with the dead dragon? Skeleton? Does it need uh, to have lips? Or just teeth? I think just... It just has to have a head. That's it. His jaw? His head. Yeah, the whole head. If the head's destroyed, you can't cast it. We need to have decent head game. <laughs> this game <laughs> what, is about <laughs> finding a complete and fulfilling head for the spell. Magic, roughly how large is its foot? <laughs> you are terrible at hiding your intentions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the subtlety is, like, <laughs> We Six. are approximately 12. Welcome to my D&D &D oh table. <laughs> 12 inches? Okay, size I'm... 12? American size 12? I think I mumbled it quiet enough, but when you were t talking about your, like, <laughs> lore to heck, and you were like, you can tell by the size of it, I went... <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough... No, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> but no, really. No, so I don't uh, think dragons have bones there. Um, there are some species that do, though. They they, 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 they do have. <laughs> they do they do have at least the the finger like appendages leading to the a wrist like connection. So where you where you know there would sometimes be webbing between those. Uh, I mean the hind feet are basically. 18 inches or so from the wrist to the tip of the nail. The okay. front the front ones are a little smaller. So before we just like make it real live to speak with it, Ulta's going to remove a foot so that it's down one limb at a minimum. <laughs> uh, and and essentially if they're trying to resurrect this thing, then they're gonna need all of its parts. And if it's missing one foot, then Maybe the skull. Ooh. You know, I like also, that. Also, I think that's an excellent idea. I think even taking a wing, too. You know, yeah. A couple of appendages. That's you a know, brilliant idea. I like that we all thought we knew what you were saying, and you were like, I just want it to not be able to chase us if it comes to life. <laughs> that's it. I just tried to make it. And all uh, of us are oh, like, no, it's dicks, a dicks, joke. dicks, dicks, dicks. <laughs> <laughs> that is a poor old threat. would have gone to any other time! We the said... one time I need you to take me seriously and you don't! It was just yes. so well. This is uh. the absolute worst of two. Oh, God. Everything's oh, fine. No. Sorry, Magic. Uh... <laughs> no, you're not. Don't lie to me. Here. <laughs> uh, okay. Do we want to? Finish. Should I cast Speak with Dead on this thing? Hell yeah, probably knows way more than those little dudes. Okay, but let's all come up with five questions that we think are important and are worded in a way that they can't fuck me over. All right, rubbing the two Where's brain cells dad? together. Here we go. Where's my dad? He's dead. <laughs> in a grave, in a grove. First question, what color are you? <laughs> all right. I need to you have a soul together. stone? Can I have it? So we want to ask who who they are, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do we want to ask who killed them? I feel like that. Do, do you think that's relevant? I think so. Or maybe how did you die? Okay. Who killed you might be better. For for who are you? Can we include um, name, color, and ori <laughs> orientation? <laughs> What? ASL? <laughs> hey, ASL. That counts well, as I mean, one question, Magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one answer with the bulleted lips. What's an Omegle, this dragon? Are you a dragon soul? If so, detail the outline of your life from beginning to end. And I have Thanks your soul. The context of their identity within like the dragon culture that we know so far of like, you know, uh, not orientation, alignment. That's what I meant, not orientation. Okay, but hang on, everyone. What if we ask them who they serve? Because and they say the dragon queen again. <laughs> if they say the dragon, if the dragon says the dragon queen, then we definitely remove all of its appendages. But if they're like, I hate that bitch, fuck her, she's the devil, um, what if we talk to our necromancer that we left behind uh, over in... Was that... That wasn't Baldur's Gate. It was in... Uh, Waterdeep. Waterdeep. Our, Waterdeep, the, our necromancer yeah. Waterdeep, friend sorry. in Waterdeep, and we alert them to where this body is, and they revive a dragon for our side. All right. I'm just... I'm just spitballing. I don't know... I don't know uh, what the Council of Waterdeep would think about uh, necrotic dragons, um, but we do have that in our back pocket. Juno, I think Spunk has a question. Yes. Oh, sorry, Spunk, I didn't see you there. So small. I tried to raise my hand. Um, you should raise it higher next what, time. What if you cast the spell and when the person comes back to answer your question, you say, I'm going to ask you some questions and you may feel inclined to be a smart ass about it, but 
Keep in mind that if you answer this with a smart ass remark, I won't ask my last question and you can sit here for the rest of your life, okay, fucker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the spell only lasts for 10 minutes. It does, but I can get out a good threat uh, beforehand. <laughs> really start with informed consent. Yes, and I will inform them. Question one. <laughs> Continue. No. I will inform them they are consenting. You should th try to threaten okay. the ghost. I will inform Question them one. that I brought their soul back from the beyond. And then take their soul, and you could be the bone dragon soul. Watching Ooh. the collective multiple ADHD things happening right now is like, it's giving me life right now, guys. <laughs> Question one, we've got basically, who's your daddy and what does he do? I thought, who are you? Who does number who two work you, for? And who do you serve? <laughs> I have, who are you? Who killed you? Who do you serve? Yep. And then we've got a fourth question a that we need to ask that's of importance. And then the fifth question is our maybe question. That's very important. I would like some candy. What? Ask them, do you have any candy or bubble gum? I have candy if you need some. I want to know if they have any. And if they don't, I don't think they have pockets, some. Spunk. They're a well, skeleton. They mouth, then? They're, they don't have a spot to store the candy. Unless their bone marrow is made of it. We could pre-chew it for them. And then stick it to the inside of their back teeth. Ooh. We could. So question uh, I mean, four. depending <laughs> depending on what um, kind of dragon they are, we might be able to ask something about a mask. Yeah. If they know what dragon that where we killed by the mask. Yeah, it's like we, we should definitely um, avoid as many like yes no questions as we possibly can. Yeah, like, can we ask how to kill Tiamat? You know, just like in the off chance. <laughs> um, I think that's a valid. Good question. I'm, I just posted these in chat real quick, so that way I would remember them. I'm also taking notes of these. Thank you, Heck. You. I'm the mouth, you are the brains. <laughs> Don't forget to take note that his feet are roughly about 18 inches long. I mean, yeah, I can make a note of it right next to the phalanges. Thank you. And I actually did take a note of the phalanges. <laughs> um not the only fa sounding thing <laughs> we take note of. I partially expect it to be a blue dragon because we're here for the blue mask. Right? Because we found the green dragon when we looked for the green mask. I said phallic. Uh, no, well, I said phallus. She said black. I'm mask. wondering... We haven't seen enough dragon skeletons at this point, Magic, have we? <laughs> to like be able to discern like what the shape or what the head looks like of a blue dragon, or like Wait, the dragons that we've encountered, dragon. the skull shape. We've seen a live blue dragon. You've we've seen, seen a live one, but I don't know if that would be representative of their skull. You have seen the skeleton of what you now know was a golden dragon. That was the first one we ever saw down in the one thing. Yep, yep. in in the vault in Waterdeep. Um, other skeletons you have not seen, but in the flesh you have seen. Uh, blue. amethyst, green, blue, crystal, white. Um, yeah, heck, the player has a good idea of what this is, but Aster does not. Uh, cool. yeah, for for all of you, it is obvious to see that this skull does not match any dragon skeleton or in the flesh that you've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Cool, 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 cool. So, do we think it's more important to ask what color dragon they are or who they are? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Can we make it like a like a slash question? Can you when you ask the question, can you say, "Who are you?" Slash. Who are you who, and what? Who slash what, what color are you? are you? That sounds so awful saying that out loud. Well, yeah. No, like who slash what are you? I mean, we don't have to 
at the last little bit. Yeah, who or what, who slash what are you? Is that allowed? Is that a legal question? I feel like those are just two different questions. I feel like that's just two different questions. Yeah. So, like, okay. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that uh, as our fifth question. If we, when I look back, everyone, and we're like, do we let this uh, dragon go in peace or do we leave them here in perpetuity? I think you should put the fifth question at the front of the order of questionings and ask them first what pronouns they prefer. That's a very important question. It would be so we should use the fifth question for it. We could always cast it again, right? Like, you got more spell slots. No, I think it's just, you can only... Oh, is this one of your, like, special I, th I love God things? <laughs> Oh, can you ask what a corpse more it more than once? I thought you could only cast it on one a corpse one time. Is this the cleric thing or the spell thing? Uh, the spell thing. Speak with dead the spell. Ten days before you cast it on the same corpse a second time. I don't see anything indicating that on the spell. It should say it on the uh, spell. The spell fails if the corpse was a target oh. of this spell within the last ten days. Yeah, it's I literally the second, you. third sentence. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> I'm so a nerd. I magic. get. To, I'm gonna ask the four <laughs> questions, and then we'll decide on number five. We'll make a game time decision. Oh. Wait, oh. Oh. but I'm gonna threaten them first, right? I I have an idea for number five, really quick before we go. Okay. How big was your dick? <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I knew we couldn't walk away without one person saying it. We are so far in this game without it. No, I'm just kidding. We didn't. We're all exactly acne perfect. cartoons and hyacinths at the top of the sky tower holding the rope that dangles the piano over our heads. <laughs> yep. Yep, I've seen this anime before. <laughs> uh, I will cast Speak with Dead on this beautiful dragon. Skeleton. Okay. Um, I swear to God, if you tell me my spell fails, I'm coming over to your house and setting it on fire. No, the spell doesn't fail. Can uh, you say that it, on YouTube? It is a... No. Well, that was a joke, everyone. <laughs> everyone at home, I don't game. even know where he lives. Reported promoting <laughs> violence against another person. We're friends on the internet. I don't know where he lives. <laughs> Our first day, Gordon! <laughs> Look, if they make it to... Our oh, dream. It's on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get us canceled. So that's <laughs> terms and conditions stuff before streams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be fair, I think that that's the same across both. But like for real, if anybody actually reports that, get wrecked. Uh, <laughs> okay. Anywho. If you report that, I'm punching you in your metaphorical <laughs> dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell we have a terrible time always this is the worst um okay wake up dragon <laughs> okay so you're going to feel uh all of you are going to feel like this pulse and tension in the air around you um obviously the power and impact of this spell is much much more than it was with the human uh just a minute ago uh mm -hmm. and you can you can see and hear every bone on the wall here kind of rattle and ripple starting from head and going to toe um but it's kind of stuck there kind of like a fly pinned to a, a display um but this That's horrible the i mean it literally is pinned up against the wall so uh <laughs> uh the skull sort of like does one of these and then looks right at you juno um before i begin asking you questions i want you to know that there is potential to leave you in a hellscape for perpetuity of just staring at this flame with your body pinned to the wall if you ask questions in a dumb way or answer questions in a dumb way so please be respectful of my time and your time and i will set you free uh all right question number one who are you All right. 
You got uh, <laughs> all of you are going to hear this response you notice that the mouth actually does not move um oh can i have done this all in draconic to sure. make him nervous or or respected or her him or her them it respected um yeah you make a persuasion or intimidation check to start this off I don't think I'm good at either of those let's start this one 16 okay I should have cast guidance on myself it's too late now uh you feel pretty good about your delivery of that um but you will you will also observe that it is very difficult to like notice any sort of reaction if one was given uh given the fact that this is literally just a skull looking at you um take that how you will so your first question is who sorry, are you who are you okay all of you are going to hear this as if it was spoken to you but the mouth does not move um you would all notice this because you've experienced it before as uh, a dragon's ability to communicate telepathically. Uh, and since you have essentially conditionally resurrected the spirit of a dragon and there is no limitation on the spell that says it has to use its mouth, I'm going to have fun with this. Make it spooky. You get him, Juice. It holds on to its power post-death. Jeez, Rick. I am known as Dinstaloth, the Defiler. I'm sorry, one more time? Nozjok just <laughs> drops as he says Defiler. Dinstaloth? Oh. Uh. <laughs> Who are you? Who sorry, killed you? Time. Can you spell that for me? <laughs> hey. You're not about, this isn't about you right now, Spunk. Sorry. Um. Uh, who killed you? I do not know the name of the hunter that came for me. Yes, that's a satisfactory way to answer that. Well, the hunter is definitely. Uh, who do you serve? In life, I serve myself and my brood. In death, my spirit waits with mother. With mother? Um, okay. How do we kill the Queen of Dragons? And I would also <laughs> like to try to read into what his reaction is to me asking that question. I know it's hard for a skull to emote, but like, does the jaw drop? I just want to kind of check their vibe a little. <laughs> These ones believe they can kill the Queen of Dragons. Simply, I do not know. But moreover, I do not know that it is possible. All right, everyone, should we ask a final question and release the spirit, or uh, do we Got just start taking their the limbs and leaving them here? Ask if they have any messages. From they the have any beyond. messages? Yes, from a great beyond. I want to know what happens on the other side. I I have a question too. Can we like flick its schnoz and ask if it felt that? <laughs> Pull up my gun and I shoot. It <laughs> you are not a scientist, Icarus. 
You're a field agent. Shut up and collect my dirt samples. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry everyone, I'm just on this scientist <laughs> kick, and I know that the audience at home knows what I'm talking about now, because bloopers. Um... Ulta or Aster, do either of you have an idea of what you would want the final question to be? Come up with it quickly, we only have ten minutes. So, well, I didn't want to cut off Aster if they were about to speak. Um, so... Ulta, in her mind hearing, as soon as they said their name, she was like, oh, okay, bad guy, obviously. Like, we know that. Oh, yeah. Said the things. Um, so she's kind of just uninterested. She doesn't have necessarily anything to follow up. We have an answer. But I think if we were to ask anything, she would want to know more about, like, what's happening here at this tower obviously we know they're trying to resurrect this guy etc cetera, etc cetera, but like what else is needed to do that like what 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 other little bits and bobs do they need to complete that task because i yeah. so what is needed to, to complete your things. resurrection mm -hmm. ulta's like going to take those items out of here yeah we'll try to like a skull i think we did a step of that by taking the wizards out of here yeah, but like I think that definitely helped, but I agree because like I feel like with this cult, there's always a replacement squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's always some other nerd sitting at the desk waiting to put be put in the field. Hmm. Aster, your thoughts? I do like that idea. Um, before um, I think of another question, though, um, is there anything we could roll to maybe like know more about that name, like a, I don't know, like a history check or something? Yeah, yeah, you can roll a history check. <clears throat> uh, anybody who wants to can. And there nope. is this is not meant to be leading in any way, but you did ask about like, is there anything we can glean from like insight of of their answers? Uh, one thing that pops out to me that in character would be important to many of you is uh, when you asked who killed you, uh, he said, I do not know the name of the hunter that came for me. Mm -hmm. He knew someone came for him and it was singular. Good to know. Good to know. Ulta. Nope. <laughs> I need you to go to above that and see what else is there as well. Because Ulta and Juno are our team. Juno. Fucking stupid. Only slightly less nope. <laughs> uh, Icarus. Thank you, Ulta. Thank you for keeping keeping us both humble. Icarus, uh, at the very least, a dragon having a title is, you know, would be sometimes attributed to their own self-righteousness and the kind of vibe that they would want to give other people when they learn their name. Uh, and it is sometimes just a sort of, like a, a t not less a title, more of like a nickname that sometimes humanoid creatures or like non-dragons, I guess, since not everybody's humanoid, uh, non-dragons would give to infamous dragons and other infamous creatures of like mass destruction, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, when they, when they do big deeds, uh, like there was a, the defiler might be the reason he was hunted. Sure. That is, that is a reasonable connection to make. You're not, I'm not going to say that it's a name you've heard before, but at least there's sort of like a naming convention that you're able to track. That is probably one of those two things. Okay. Uh, you have time for any other discussion you want, and you uh, have one more question. Okay. What's the best way to ask the question, though? Like, just what would be used in your resurrection, or how would you be resurrected? What would, yeah. What all would you need? 
to be resurrected or what else did they need to resurrect you i don't know i i chrissy the player can't noodle that out we could lie to him and say we're what are we to trying to ask and ask him how we can we're trying to figure out if there's anything in this room that we need to take with us so that way this guy never gets resurrected you would have because to take a his name whole like body. defiler sounds like a terrible idea to let into the world you would have to take the whole body and destroy all of it i think our best bet might be just making him think that we are going to defile him because like stroking ego sometimes works for evil dragons from our history defile him just met him um in case it might help pare things down as far as ideas juno you would know as the caster of the spell there's a very important detail in its description this corpse spirit combination is not able to process any new information okay so i wouldn't be able to ask like what in this room because they don't have a memory yeah they that. wouldn't have any idea yeah so maybe don't ask what maybe it how are dragons happen. resurrected <clears throat> maybe. or where would you be resurrected from because he said his uh spirit was with mother where is his spirit, where is Mother? Avernus. You would understand Mother to be Tiamat herself. Shit balls. Yeah. Hell. I've got it. Why don't you just burn the bones in a carn? What would we need from you, or what would we need to do to free you from Avernus? I think it's risking whether he knows or not, but I think that's fine because... Oh, I already asked the question, baby. Yeah, we don't know if he would I'm, know I'm not. ripping off that band-aid. This is unfortunately not a consult. So you actually asked that question? Yeah, I asked that question because if we can figure out how to get to Avernus or how we're they going to bring people out of Avernus, that's going to be our best bet to either go there and stop it or because I'm like what if it's not just the Tower of Dragons or the Well of Dragons what if what if we're missing a part of that process okay um good question it was what do we need to do, what would we need to do in order to get you out of Avernus? Avernus? Yeah. Ah, an ambitious one. So far as I know, you would gather your twelve, create and recite your incantation, have my phylactery ready and be prepared for a powerful undead presence. Magic, would you be able to type out what you said in chat or say it yeah. in not that voice? <laughs> um, because there were parts of it that I did not understand. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. God, no I, worries. I like doing cool the cool voice, voices, but just like my brain was like, Ooh. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll, that's I'll also on me. I'm exhausted. So. Ready. Uh, I'll say it out loud so you guys can write it down because we quickly lose our chat. Um, uh, you, you, you will gather your twelve. You would recite your incantation. You would have his phylactery prepared, and you would you would be in in your passive insight would tell you like steal yourself emotionally for the presence of a powerful undead meaning himself yeah. um all of you have now experienced enough dragon and undead and lich things globally between across you as a party i know there's varying degrees of experience with this but as a party overall this does not track with what you've witnessed 
you you're clocking that he's talking about becoming a draco lich um you understand gathering 12 meaning to gather people to do a magic uh reciting an incantation that is in line with like reciting a spell in unison with t like 12 people in total to make it happen phylactery definitely a lich thing uh and you have at least some idea of what that is and but the biggest thing that would hit many of you is this is not in line with how you've personally witnessed a draculich being created spunk you are an exception to that you were not there But I believe they at least described to you sure. seeing this, yeah. That was the fifth question. Yes. So, with that, the skull sort of retracts back to its spot on the wall. And you all feel this, this like, weird tension and presence that you felt when the, the spell was first cast dissipate. And Should we get to defiling everyone? <laughs> uh, that is where we should uh, end our session today. We are actually a little over time. I try to, I try to keep it on time or, or early for you guys that are sleepy, sleepy beans. Um, is there anything last minute that you guys want to talk about with all that before we get going? No, but I am gonna make a note to where we're starting next session so I remember. Yeah, and I'll <laughs> I'll give you a, a thorough recap of that as well before our next session. Okay, so that's going to be a wrap for us tonight. Um, in classic fashion for us, we're going to go around the table one more time. Uh, remind us who your character was, who you are, and uh, briefly, any if there's any other fun TTRPG stuff you've got coming up that you want people to check out, uh, you can talk about that and where to find it. As a reminder, we are now on YouTube, so things that are on Twitch or Discord or other platforms will need to specify that. Go with Heck. All right. Hey, everybody. It's me, Sir Heckalot. Now you know, at least. Hello, YouTube. Um, tonight, I played Aster, the Shifter Circle Wildfire Druid. Um, you can catch me um, on all the social medias at Sir Heckalot, including Twitch, Itch, maybe Twitter, as long as it still live we'll see um but i just joined blue sky so you can find me over there um it's uh i'm on youtube you can see me in the chat um just find me as the best place to figure out where i'm gonna be in the ttrpg space next because i tend to wander just a whole lot um tomorrow you can find me over on lost caravan rpg's twitch channel playing blades in the dark uh, i haven't played this game before somehow and it's really cool so i'm very excited to see a uh, if uh, our motley crew uh, will be able to find and catch a serial killer. That's going to be interesting. Um, on Sunday, you can catch me over on Indoor Adventures Twitch channel um, playing Apocalypse Keys. Uh, we will be finishing up a case um, where we are trying to solve some murders, so I'm sensing a theme here. Um, and then lastly, for a bit, um, on August 1st and Tuesday, you can catch me over on Neon Lights Roleplay over on Twitch. Um, which uh, I will be playing some Rogue 2E, and it will be the finale of that show. So um, definitely go and check it out. Um, but that is enough for me. Over to Bright. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Bright, and you can find me on all forms of social media under Bright Dystopia. Tonight, pl tonight I play the, uh, the very wonderful Spunk, who is... So if you want to catch me this Friday when I play with Bo on his on their stream, uh, we're going to be playing some Arena League of Legends. Come join us then. That's uh, this Friday, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, that's it for me. Moving on to Hyacinth. Hiya, or Baya. It's me, Hyacinth. Um, I was playing Icarus, our sorcerer. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm, nope. Our <laughs> Ooh. Paladin Warlock. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Andersons. That's where it's easiest to reach me because usernames get confusing, especially when half the people steal Hyacinth because no one loves me. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got going for now. Corn dog. It's me, everyone. Corn dog Groth. 
Uh, you can catch me on the internet at Corndon McGraw. I am currently in the process of learning how to play Fortnite. So if you are also are a Gen Z or just like me, uh, let's play Fortnite together. Um, actually, don't play with me because I just like to hide. Uh, anyways, you can find me on the internet at Corndon McGraw. Uh, and I won't be around uh, until probably two weeks from now. So I'll see you guys same bat time, same bat channel now. Uh, here in two weeks. Otherwise, catch me at Gen Con next week. Okay, over to you, Chrissy. Bye. I'm muted. Just kidding. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Uh, I'm Chrissy, uh, and I played Ultra Cragmall, our, uh, little Cobalt Stormkeeper Ranger. Um, you can find me on the internet at Chrissy Kretz on everywhere, the things. Uh, I, I'll be back here in, in a couple weeks doing more things. Uh, I'm also, uh, Bright Dystopia's, uh, assistant to the regional manager, uh, they just released a new voice acting demo reel. So while we are all in support, and I'm looking at everybody, of the SAG-AFTRA strike, you should still go listen to the demo reel and like think about the good things that you're going to ultimately cast Bright Dystopia in for you. You know, when like things are good for getting paid for those things. Individual projects are fine. Okay, individual products are fine. Fuck you, Paramount, Lionsgate, and whoever else. <laughs> and on that note, and I think I pointed the wrong way. Either way, wherever it is, uh, I am going to be around in two weeks. Other than that, um, I just stole a dragon dick bone and also a foot. Okay, thanks. Bye, Magic. Your turn. <laughs> we had to throw it in there. Uh you are oh, muted. I am muted. <laughs> we had to throw it in there. Uh, okay. Finally, I appreciate that you've done that as many times as you have this evening. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> I am Dad Magic Juice. Uh, this show exists on a channel that um, has migrated now to YouTube for all live streaming uh, instead of Twitch. So this channel does a whole bunch of stuff, mostly video games and D&D. But for D&D, this is the only show happening on this channel. I do actually have, this is like a soft launch of um, the other channel I run that I am catching up on things with and will have a lot more content called Crits and Giggles. Uh, that is the link in the chat if you're interested in checking that out. Currently running one show every other Sunday, including this Sunday. Uh, that channel does include everything that we've done from day one to this point, and the live will just tack on to the end of that um, for a show called Tenements of the Great Rift. That is going to be this Sunday at noon central and goes every other Sunday from there. There will eventually be other shows and content that goes on that channel as well. Um, and otherwise, you can find me on several forms of social media at that Magic Juice, but not all of them because fuck me sideways, there are far too many. Um, Twitter, at least for now, is probably going to be the main one. TikTok and Instagram. Yeehaw for now. Everybody be cool. We'll see you right here again in two weeks. Say goodnight, everybody.